Yeah, I can hear you. You good? Yeah, we're good. Where are you at, bro? Are you in Logandale? I'm in Logandale, yeah. I'm in uh, in my little makeshift office here. I love it, dude. I freaking love it. Uh, that's It's like that little spot you just go and you just turn on the freaking, you turn it on, dude. You turn it on. Um, what I was going to say is this really, really quick. And then um, I want to segue. This is a perfect segue into you know, your story, why I brought you on everything else, but I was going to share this and I wanted to get you on first and I wanted to get the call recording. Um, a lot of people, I'm sure you could agree to this Shane, but, um, and by the way, everyone, this is Shane. Um, ironically enough, we're going to get into the story here in a second. Shane and I lived really like not very far from each other for a couple of years. He lives just down the road. What is the drive an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, an hour, hour ten. And you're in you're in St. George once a week at least, maybe, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna get into all of that, but the reason that I'm saying that is a lot of times people, especially people that are watching right now, they're new. They're like, dude, this guy is on coke or cocaine or I don't know, those are the same thing or Adderall. And I'm I was gonna say I'm sure you thought the same thing. And the reason why I get so pumped up is, and this is what I was gonna share right before is, guys. Uh, back in 2013, 14, 15, 16, I was knocking door to door. I was in Arkansas and Alabama. And by the way, we tried to get Shane or Kyle, my cowboy Kyle tried to rope Shane into it too. We can get into that. But I was knocking door to door to make my money. And it was literally the hottest. And the guys, I've lived in Africa. Like it was so hot. People were so mean. People were like, chasing me off the road, calling the cops, telling me that I'm a worthless pile, go get a real job. All my dad's telling me it's a scam. That's what I was doing, right? And so I remember about 2015, when I heard of digital real estate, I heard a podcast. And I remember like, some of you guys aren't going to appreciate this the way I did, but I remember thinking, hold up, I could sit in my office, in the AC, I can build these little properties and I can go and rent them out. And I don't need to know anything about tech and, and I can still make it work. And I was like, that sounds way too good to be true. <laughs> like it sounds way too good to be true. So when you hear me getting excited, it's because I took the leap. I took the risk. I bought the program. I learned the thing and I did it. And I learned, oh, not only is it not a scam, but it is the best business model on the planet. So when I get all pumped up and excited, I'm like, dude, some of you guys don't appreciate it because you haven't knocked doors. Some of you guys don't appreciate it because you haven't cleaned carpets. Some of you guys don't appreciate it because you haven't mowed lawns or worked on the farm. But for those of us that have, this is the freaking, like, it's a clown job, man. Like, we're in the AC. We can wear uh, uh, Lululemon head to toe and no one cares. Like, come on, man. So anyway, I wanted to say that. Shane, uh, welcome. And I think it only is right if uh, if you tell these guys how we knew each other before we started working together when you joined Digital Landlords, because that was back in 2018. I actually knew of Shane. And why don't you tell the story, bro? Make sure to include Kyle and make sure to call him Cowboy Kyle. So because I know he's watching. I'll tell you the day the day I met. You, can you hear me? All right. Is oh, there, you're great. Is there like, no background noise? No, you're good. Okay. Um, I'll tell you the day I met Kyle. Uh, and we've, anyways, he was, I was painting for the company he used to paint for. It's like five in the morning. We're all sitting outside, getting ready to start the day. And we hear these freaking gunshots go off. Like, what the heck? You know, it's like, a, it's like a neighborhood in, I mean, it's not like we're out in the hills. And next thing you know, the guy that owned the company is like, dude, that's Kyle. And Kyle's like in this freaking neighborhood shooting coyotes at like five in the morning, just, uh, just random. When he goes, dude, straight from that to like me and a group of my buddies, like, hey man, you guys want to come freaking sell uh, door to door for, for the summer? Like no introduction. Like, uh, anyways, it, that was, uh, but by, by the way, for anyone that doesn't know which Kyle he's referring to, it's Cowboy Kyle. He's six foot nine. He used to be about 300 pounds. He's a specimen. He's a unit. He is a freaking giant. But 
He's also one of the nicest guys I know. And I think I told you this on the phone the other day. He's the kind of guy you could leave $5 million in cash with, and you wouldn't even count it when you got back. So Kyle is the one, for any of you guys that end up joining Digital Landlords, you're probably going to talk to Kyle or Dave. So if you talk to Kyle, that's Kyle. So here's here's uh, the quick version, and Shane can fill in the details. Uh, 2018 or so, something like that, I was mainly doing SEO, okay? Most of my business was SEO. We, we I knew what lead gen was. I had tried doing lead gen, and I had a couple of like paper lead deals. And I could kind of see the writing on the wall that like, this isn't sustainable. What's going to happen in the winter? But most of our deals that we had were pay for lead. So Kyle, Cowboy Kyle, because he knows Shane, because he tried to get he tried to get Shane to go and knock door to door when Shane was smart enough to go, dude, that's ridiculous. That sounds terrible. So kudos on you. Kyle goes, hey, I got this guy. I know him. He lives in town. He's got a carpet cleaning business. And at this time, dude, I didn't have a sales system. I didn't have anything, scripts or whatever. And I was like, just telling all my guys, I'm like, just call everybody you know. So he calls, Shane comes in and meets with us. And basically we pitch Shane the most pathetic, as I think it was a paper, was it a, was it a paper leader or a flat, as a flat rate deal, right? What was the deal? We tried to sell this guy. Guys, keep in mind, at the time, Shane is a carpet, he owns a carpet cleaning company, still does but he's doing carpet cleaning as a business owner. So I didn't know we were going to be here however many years later. So yeah. uh, what was the deal, bro? What kind of deal? We gave you like a screamer and you still said no. Dude, dude like we pulled it up the other day and uh, dude, it was, it was 500 bucks a month. And you were, you were actually prom Like it was a good deal. Looking, I'm like, man, I can't believe we didn't do that. But uh, for whatever reason. No. He said no. They got he, I couldn't sell him on a $500 a month deal, but you know why I don't think it was is because I didn't believe that I could deliver the results like I do now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So right. if I, if I knew what I knew now, I would have been like, dude, you're not getting out of my office until you either freaking arm wrestle me for this or you give me your credit card. I think if you would have known that you probably wouldn't be selling a freaking carpet cleaner. <laughs> right i didn't even know the niche what what was good what was bad exactly for sure so anyway so he says no and then fast forward somebody calls him to tell him how you got into this is where the story kind of starts that's how we know each other and <laughs> at the time don't you don't have to admit it but i know shane is like dude these guys are a bunch of freaking douchebags like they're just over there dude, doing i'll admit it we <laughs> he admits it that's okay bro i take that on the chin i'm proud of it um so he doesn't do the deal and then tell everyone how you got into ranking around um so kind of the condensed version i actually had somebody else and we've talked about this that lives in st george sell me another he sold me which i didn't even know he was doing ranking around he just sold me leads he, he actually did a pretty similar model called me up. Hey, can you take care of these jobs for me? Gave me three or four. Of course, I'm hooked. Sign me up. And, uh, and in fact, I still pay for that freaking site to this day for my carpet cleaning company. I love it. Um, but uh, I started getting interested in doing something else besides carpet cleaning. And, and honestly, this guy that... Uh, that sold me i mean we've got a good relationship i still talk to him today is his name brad uh it's zach okay it's, we'll, we'll talk about this later i think i know who owns the site good yeah so uh dude like literally the relationship that i had with him i used to think like dude i'm above you i own a business like you're just a little marketing guy <laughs> like we would meet regularly and like i mean probably showed a little bit of disrespect if i'm being honest of what he was doing um anyways kind of fast forward i started getting into sales started selling for a marketing agency i don't know if we've talked about that but quickly realized i wanted to do my own thing knew that he was doing some type of marketing called him up I was like hey what are you doing and uh, we hopped on a Zoom call and he showed me what he was, dude, I was mind blown. 
I like because because I just viewed him because he's a he's like a seminary teacher. Um, for those of you who don't know, basically a pastor, yeah. if, for lack of a better word. So I like dude, this guy probably he's making a couple hundred bucks a month. Come to find out, he's making over six figures doing, I mean, passively with this business. And, and that just freaking blew my mind. So that, that started the journey uh, of how I got into rank and rent and got excited about it for sure. And, and uh, so he, and, and so Shane ends up like basically getting on a zoom call, buys the program and starts getting into, you know, this business model. Right. So that's what year is that? Uh, that was this year. That was, uh, you're talking about, my first yeah that was like what january yeah i bought my first first uh ranking program december 31st because i wanted to get the deal and and the well you got the write-off so it is what it is okay so from december 31st till when we talked and and then you end up finding this group i don't even know how you came across how did we get how did you get in here uh i had talked to the original guys and uh you know you know, they obviously want you to pay a chunk of change. So I'm like, hey, let me maybe, because uh, it was quick. Like I hopped on a Zoom call with Zach. The next day I was on a Zoom call with these other guys. So I'm like, oh, let me maybe uh, kind of just do a little research. So I started joining all these groups, you know, kind of doing that thing. And, and then so I pretty much joined and that was it, you know. Like, oh, that's that douchebag again. <laughs> I can't get it out of my out of my face, dude. I love it. Well, it's funny. I had to, I didn't even make the connection right away. I know. A long time, but I think you fill out an application, and then we were talking, and you're like, "Dude, I think we've met," and then it all clicked. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, that's right." And I was like, "Oh, this guy, he's gonna think I'm such a clown." Hopefully, hopefully, I can gain back a little bit of respect. Yeah. So, what I want you to talk about really quick is. What was the pro like, by the way, for everybody out there, I, I believe no matter whether it's MLMs, whether it's e-com, whether it's, I don't care what it is, as long as it's not something shady, if you do it long enough, you're going to make money. So I don't want to like hate on anything else or any other, like whatever. Like, I think there's, you can make money if you do something long enough. But I think the problem that a lot of people have seen, and some of you guys, maybe you haven't bought your first program and you're like, should I just like whatever? So what was the problem like in your mind, like with, with just the traditional rank and rent, the way that it was being taught that ended up because it wasn't until you hopped into to digital landlords, which was flat fee mastery, obviously until a couple of week, a week ago. And, you know, even then you were still kind of like doing some other stuff, but what was, what did you see as the thing that was holding you back, even though you were familiar with the model you knew how to build a site you knew how to get a lead but you still weren't making you know the money you wanted to make uh, so i'll preface with this and, and you'll agree with this but because i i don't want i don't want people to listen to this and use it as an excuse uh because i think you can join a group and a lot of you are in other groups and make money I agree, 100%. The, the reality is you're just not putting in the work yep. um so so the group that I was in prior to this, I, I'm still in it. Um, and by the way, of, that group, I know those guys, they're dope. Like it's a cool, they're, they're cool. Yeah. Uh, the guy that, that, uh, uh, that I've talked about that, oh, you know, kind of introduced me to ranking, he's in that group. Um, the SEO content, all that's great. But there was so many uh, within rank and rent and digital marketing, SEO, there's so many shiny objects just within what we're doing. And that was the issue that I had is I got in the group, you know, it's new, brand new to me. Like I, I didn't, dude, I'm not a tech guy. Like I can manage a computer and all that, but I building a website, like we have people fooled that it's super challenging. <laughs> right. That's how I was. Like I, I just had no clue. So I'm in this new world, and then you hear, "Oh, this works. This way works." Like go and sell websites, do an SEO deal, and you know, get a upfront fee, and then do commissions. Like they're just, it was all, 
over the place and it was confusing. And I just felt, I felt kind of lost. And, and honestly, like, I'm not, I felt like I'm a pretty confident guy. And I felt like in that group, I got lost in the shuffle, so to speak of like what to even do. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. So that, that was, uh, yeah, that was. That, that, and that was basically your first couple months because I think it was about March or April, maybe when we talked finally. And uh, you were basically, I remember our call. You were like, dude, I just want to do like, I don't have a system to sell. I don't know what to do, like do this, 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 and this, and a deal will come out the other side. I just need one system. I'm a simple guy. And I just like, just like me, cause I mean, I'm not overly technically like smart. And so I think that was what the missing piece was. It's like, and, and I think anyone out there, and I think to your point, dude, you could go by a U, Udemy. Is it Udemy or Udemy? How do you say it, by the way? I've never even heard of it. Okay. It's like, so there's this thing called Udemy, super cheap courses. Guys, you could go buy one of those. And if you do the thing and you actually do it long enough, you're going to make money. Right. But it's like, how much, like, obviously a $20 thing, are they going to like, how much effort's going into it? Who's teaching it, et cetera. Right. But to your point, it's like, you got in this because you wanted passive income. You got in this because you wanted real, you wanted digital real estate, which I know you're a physical real estate guy. We're going to talk about that in a second too. So just understand everybody that like, just because you know how to build a website, just because you know how to generate a lead does not mean you're going to make money. It does not mean you're going to make money um whatsoever so now i want to ask you tell us about your deal dude tell us about your freaking two thousand dollar a month banger that you locked down when was that a couple weeks ago uh about a, it's been a month yeah about a month ago a month ago and uh you got any other ones in the pipe i've got another one so i have two i have three deals you uh, close three i've got three and then i have one i've got a I've actually got a Zoom call in like an hour. My guy, you're gonna go off of this, dude, and then we're gonna we're you're gonna post and tell us what you closed it for. How much you making right now per month? Uh, dude, top, top line. I know it's gonna depend on everything, but uh, eighteen hundred. I think like you're talking net profit. Like no, profit. I'm talking about well, eighteen hundred is your net profit. Okay, what's your top line? Which you got the two thousand dollar deal, and what's the other two? So so four K total. For okay. the, uh, for, for okay. the Dude, that's not bad for you just built those sites that's almost 50 percent profit with uh i mean that's that's incredible okay so 4k profit what are you pitching the guy at tonight uh 1500 and here's what's cool too for those of you guys that are like wait it's four thousand. why is it only 1800 a month profit because guys what we do is we get the deal we have the ads that are going and then as we're doing the organic as we're getting the seo going the leads are starting to pick up. We're starting to lower. So the cool part is Shane is never going to make less than $1,800. The only way he can go is up because the only thing that's going to happen is his ranking is going to improve um, because he's only going to turn down the ad. So that's the exciting part. You could do nothing else, just rank those sites fully, and you could probably capture another $1,000 a month, which is, no, another 2000 bucks a month. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, dude. Okay. You could actually double your profit just with SEO, which means you wouldn't even have to sell anymore. That's cool. So uh, what uh, what niches, if you don't mind me asking, if you got a secret one, I'm cool with not sharing, but what are your niches right now? No, they're uh, the one's insulation okay. and the other two are concrete. And then the guy tonight is concrete as well. So, so when you got your first deal, did it feel like almost like surreal? Cause you're like, dude, I've been waiting for this thing. I got the sites going. Like, were you almost like, like, did that really just happen? Dude. Uh, yeah, man. Heck yeah. Like, I love it, bro. Yeah. It was a freaking dude. I mean, that's what we're all in this for, you know? Yeah. Heck yeah. It felt good. Dude, did you get, did you go and freaking, were you, are you a screamer, bro? Like me? Like you just get dude. off those positives, freaking doing the fist bump, or are you just more like that silent, like fist clench? Dude, I, I, you want to know the truth on the first one? I'm not, this is not me, but I freaking, I shed a tear. I love it, bro. Let's go. Here's our shed. Dude, you know why? It's because dude, you worked your butt off to get there. 
Oh man, that uh, yeah, dude. Like it's just uh, heck yeah. like it was such a milestone from even before rank and rent. You know, like you finally see that vision. You know, we talk about this in uh, in in digital landlords. Like you're so much closer to your goals than you like realize. And that was for me. That was like, dude, holy crap! Like I can literally get to where I want to be in two, three months when I thought it was going to take me years. Dude. And I remember what you said to me the other day when we talked, you said the same thing that a lot of people say, you said, dude, I'm all, I'm on pace for the goals that I set in the beginning when I joined the program. And I honestly thought those were high goals. It's like, you, and you said, you're like, I got to reset my goals. Yeah. It, 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 dude, that it, makes me happy, bro. I love hearing that stuff because it's like, you just, you see it in like, you, like, for example, the guy that owns the carpet cleaning site, you're like, dude, he can do it, but maybe he's smart or maybe he's technical. And it's like, well, this guy, he's good at talking. And for some reason we always think like, but I don't know if I can do it. Right. And so like that first deal guys, so those of you that haven't experienced that, like it is such a dopamine, just like injection. It feels amazing. Uh, can I can I add to that real quick? Uh, can you hear me? So, hundred percent agree. Like, go get your freaking first deal. Um, but what what really freaking changed for me? Because because you know the story. But I got in the program, didn't do anything for what three four months. So from the time that I started actually doing the work, it took me two weeks to get a deal actually took me a month, like in one month one, we did three, right? Um, but what really freaking changed for me is when I quit focusing on, cause I was always like, dude, I'm, once I get a deal, then I'll get momentum. Then I'll get going. Like I got to get a deal. Then things are going to take off. And, and uh, I was never able to create momentum prior to that deal. You know what I mean? Like I just kept spinning my wheels. So I, I finally made the shift and, and we talked about this in the pay group, but I had to figure some things out that helped me create momentum prior to that deal. If that makes sense. Oh, it makes total sense. I want to know, cause I know everyone's going to ask this. What were those things you had to do? Um, redid my map. Um, I don't even know if you've talked, you'll have to join you can comment on that if you want, but um, I redid my map. Um, and then I did a new area per day. So I would go freaking, I do the due diligence, build a contractor list, um, build a one pager, start a Google ad, start to finish every single day. Because, you know, and we had talked about this before, but the only way I was going to get there is if I was asking for money every day. But I couldn't do that because I didn't have any, you know, leads in the pipeline. So I had to figure out how was I going to get a business owner hooked? Well, I had to get an area. So that, that was what I started with. I'd do a new area, no matter what, the due diligence was sloppy. Um, the one pager looked ugly. It didn't matter. I was doing one every day. And that freaking dude, like, the, the feeling of doing that every day, like the accomplishment, because at the, at the beginning, it's, it's a lot of work. Like that freaking got me going, you know, to, to get me to be able to talk to business owners and constantly be on the phone for sure. That's cool, dude. Um, it's so true too. And I, I remember now that you say that, like, I remember seeing you on the lives in, in digital uh, landlords. And I remember you asking that exact question. You said, Cause I, so you said, what's the one thing that you did to like, like get momentum or I can't remember how we asked it. And I said, make an offer a day and you yep. took it, bro. You freaking took it. You took the nugget and you went and applied it. Um, I want to ask this question. I wrote this down before you're a real estate guy, a physical real estate guy. And, and we won't, we don't have time, but guys, this is a, this is somebody who he, he is a shenister. He will, he, he's doing deals guys. Don't worry. And I mean that in a good way. Like he's willing to like put in the work. He's willing to have the conversations. He's willing to 
shake hands, kiss babies to put deals together. And uh, if we had time, we'd share the story, but you are a real estate guy. How did, how do you look at this compared to real estate? Like obviously, and by, by the way, uh, physical real estate, let make no mistake. It has stuff that digital doesn't like depreciation, which I am going to be leveraging the crap out of this year. So I'm not saying that like it's, it's one's better than the other necessarily, but there are some things about this and starting with digital that I freaking love. How did you compare the two and how do you view the two being ha going hand in hand? Well, and I'm with you, like for me, I, I've always wanted to create like a, you want to call it an active income so that I can get passive income. And I've always thought that as physical real estate, um, you know, obviously digital real estate is, it's passive as well. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, I started, I was, so I have two rental properties, single family home rental properties that in the real estate world, you would consider freaking home runs like um in terms of like the equity that i have cash um, all that stuff. my cash on, i have zero of my own money in the deals um they cash flow really well like they're just good deals and we can get into that at a time but then i got my first two rank and rent deals and they freaking cash flow more than my physical deals like day one is that crazy you know so that, like dude that how do you beat that like there is yeah i'm still gonna go acquire more real more physical real estate for sure but like how can you argue like you go sell a website and it's gonna make you a thousand bucks a month versus like both of my deals the physical ones, I had to gut the whole house. And, you know, like, whether I did the work or somebody else did, it took a lot. It took months and months. Um, it took years to get that equity, you know, in those homes. Like, dude, from day one, I'm profiting more off of the digital real estate. So I don't, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's. It totally does. And, and guys, it, guys, girls, everybody that's out there, I, I don't know a better plan. Somebody tell me, but tell me a better plan than use physical or use digital real estate to create, to pay your bills, number one, passively so that, you know, you don't have to, you can go focus on other things and then take the excess cash, shove that into physical real estate and rinse and repeat until you have the net worth you want and the cash flow that you want and you can do whatever the heck you want. Like, I, tell me a better strategy out there. You know what I mean? It is. I, I totally agree. Like I'm, in fact, my, I'm, my carpet cleaning company is, uh, I'm selling, like it's, it's practically sold. Like it's, I'm, I'm freaking all in on, digital real estate because there's just there's there's not a, a way that i've found and i've found a lot of shiny objects <laughs> yeah can do this for sure one thing i wanted to mention too is i know this is kind of a cliche saying and i'm going to give credit where credit's due but i heard her mosey saying this but and it wasn't him that said it he was talking about warren buffett that said the phrase the boat that you're in is more important than how hard you row. And it's like, Shane, I know because I, 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 I can just tell when I meet people that they're hardworking. Like, I know you're a hundred hour a week guy. Like, it's not like you weren't working hard at the carpet cleaning company. If the problem is you're in the wrong vehicle, period. Right. And so you take the same, even if it's 50 hours, you take the same 50 hours and you put it into the right vehicle, AKA digital real estate, your returns are so much more exponential because you're in a different vehicle. You just don't have the ability. You could put in 200 hours a week, which obviously isn't possible. You're not going to go past a certain point. There's like a governor on your business because it's time for dollars. You move into digital real estate and all of a sudden you have this little thing called leverage called the internet. 
And I bet you, I'm curious, your whether your wife, your parents, I only ask this because you kind of came from a small town, kind of like me. And my parents, when I kind of explained this to them the first time, they were like, huh? Does anyone think you're selling drugs? Does anyone wonder like, what, what's Shane up to? He's not doing the carpet cleaning thing. Anybody's driving a nice truck and buying properties. Like, is he into some shady stuff? It, it, uh, you know, everybody gets those calls. Uh, what is it? Freaking, uh, did your car warranties expire? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, I have nephews and nieces and like people, they'll be like, like, we'll be in a scenario like, oh, what does Shane do? Like, what do you do for work? And they'll freaking, they'll be like, dude, he's the scammer that calls you about your car warranty on the, on the internet. Like that's. <laughs> they don't understand it. They don't understand it. It's uh, it's crazy because I was having this conversation with my dad. My dad's a farmer. He, and he always has made good money. Like, I don't know exactly, but like he, we've always had, you know, well, that's not always since I was about 15, we were in like a freaking double wide in the mud. Like, you know, when they talk in the hood, they're like, I got to get out the mud, dude. I got a picture. We were literally in the mud, dude, Rottweilers, beer, freaking hole in the door, bro. Like that whole thing. Uh, but anyway, since 15, we've been cool and he's always made good money since then. And we were just talking like literally a week ago. And he's like, he's like, dude, I don't want to be 50 or he's already 50. I don't want to be 70 years old working on the farm. He's like, because the only way I get rich is if I sell this farm and you know me well enough, I'm not selling. So like you guys seen Yellowstone, he's the freaking guy. It doesn't matter what the amount he ain't selling. So he, and he's like, dude, I'm in a broken business model. Like I'm never going to sell it. So anyway, we were just talking and, and I was like trying to explain him like it's broken. Like you need leverage. You need, so I'm only saying that because if some of you guys have parents or maybe some of you guys are my dad, you're old, you're, you're 50, you're 60. That's cool. We got people in the program that are that age. You got to wrap your head around. This is the way that, that you get rich. Now you use leverage, you use the internet to literally while you're sleeping, while you're shooting coyotes, Kyle Patton, while you're golfing, <laughs> You have these websites that are on the internet that are literally like little employees hitting the phones for you and they are doing the work while you are doing whatever the heck you want to do. And it is mind blowing. And if you really sit and think about it, it gets me excited every time I talk about it. I'm like, I got to go get more properties. I got to go get more properties because right now, and I said this last week, we are in the gold rush of this business model. We are at the land grab point where I promise you guys, me and Shane aren't going to miss it, but some of you guys are going to be like, man, I saw that, that live stream and he was talking about it for like the last five years. And all of a sudden, now we got private equity companies that are wanting to get their hand in it. And now we got this and we got these big names talking about it and everyone's going to go, oh, let me get in. And guess what? It's still going to be there, but it's not going to be like it is right now. So anyway, the short of it is, bro, I'm proud of you because like, you were humble enough to like, okay, I'm a, I'm a business owner. I think I'm better than this marketer because he's just whatever marketer. Let me humble myself and call him up, ask him what he's doing, go and freaking do it myself. And now you're cranking deals, dude. That is so crazy. That's all in a matter of, that was 2018. When did, so dude, this has all happened in like the last, since, since December. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, I keep thinking like you, you no, this is all since December 31st. Amazing. Any, so for any, what I want to, last thing real quick, and I'll let you go because I know you got to get prepped for your call and you got to freaking close this deal. Um, and then by the way, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, let Shane say one more thing. I'll let him hop off to go prep and I'm going to do a couple Q and A and give away a free coaching call. So don't, don't go anywhere, but Shane, uh, I don't want to be that cliche guy. It's at the end of the, the podcast. He's like, give us a nugget or whatever. But like put somebody that's in your position, maybe they're doing a, a bit, they're in a job or a business right now that they're, it, it, it's broken. They're, it's time for dollars, right? And they know they want more. They know they're never, like, they're starting to see the writing on the wall. Would you have, like, what advice would you give them? Would you jump, have jumped earlier would you have done it the same way you did it? Would you, like, what would you say to that person uh, that's in that spot and, and knows that they got to make a change? 
Um, no, nah, that's a really good question. Uh, to me, like if I envision myself in those dead end spots, because I, and I've been there, um, dude, I would like, you don't have momentum. Like, dude, that is, that has been a theme for this whole year for me. Like you, it, dude, like, because I've been, I've talked to a couple of people that are kind of in that position. They want to make a jump, they're full time, whatever. Dude, forget about the business, your job. Like, I don't care what it is. If you're going to create momentum with a diet, working out, um, whatever, I think that you need to create some sort of momentum in your life so that you can get out of the slump that you're in. Um, because once you do that, if you can see yourself with some momentum, some steam built up, I think that you have way more confidence to make the jump. But if I'm, if I'm telling you, dude, get out of your job, like you, you need to leave, it's dead end, you're not happy, and you're just in a slump, you don't have momentum, you're never going to make that jump. Um, it's going to be harder. So figure out anything in your life whether it's like a oh, freaking going on a, like a, a walk in the morning, turn that into a workout, you know, lose 10 pounds, whatever it is, freaking learn how to create some momentum. And then those harder decisions you got to make, I think they become a lot easier to do that. That's a really good piece of advice. And I mean that like, I'm, that's an impressive answer right off the cuff, dude. I didn't give you any prep. And I'm sitting here thinking about it literally because you were you in the were you on the coaching call or have you watched the replay from yesterday in Digital Landlords? Yeah, I was there. So I talked about yesterday making those shifts because I've even seen it myself. And I talked exactly about the same thing, momentum. Even this morning, because this morning I was like, I talked about that yesterday on the call. I got it. I got to be I got for me to speak next week on the same subject. I have to do it. I woke up at 6 a.m. First, first alarm and guys, every part of me wanted to get back in bed, dude. I was like every excuse. I'm like, I can't. So I had to get in my car and go on a drive. My wife's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I can't go back in bed. And just me getting up and all I did, I listened to like a talk and I did a little bit of, I did like some thinking of like some, the thing I want to think uh, like I've been working on. That's it. And I came home and I hung out with the kids. But just me getting up and, and, and saying I was going to do it and doing waking up at six. That's all I did. That's the only thing I did. That literally the difference between yesterday and today, night and day. That the one thing. Unreal. So I think that's a great piece of advice for anyone that's like, I'm in a slump, I'm stuck, whatever. Go find a piece of your life, whether it's your diet, whether it's your exercise, whether it's your waking up, whether it's whatever. Go and say you're going to do something and do it and do it every single day for a couple of days. You're going to create momentum. It's going to go into the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Then your confidence comes. And like you said, that jump's going to be a heck of a lot easier because now you've got these little wins you've built up and you can make the jump. Yeah. And I, and I would add to that. And we talk about this a lot in the paid group is don't freaking start something new in, until that, that thing you started becomes a standard until you don't even got to think about it anymore. You just start stacking that up, man. It's crazy how quick things go. It's so true. Quit making, quit to what you're saying, quit making it a goal, make it a standard. It used to be my goal to make, to ask for money every day. Now it's a standard. If I don't make money every single day, new money, not old money, new money every single day, I don't, I don't feel good. We go on a plane ride. We're going to Cabo, you know, you know, uh, 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 all inclusive. I ain't enjoying the day unless I made money about at 3 a.m. before I left. It's just a standard. And I got, I went to the gym as well. So dude, that's a really, really good answer, bro. I, that was, um, I've done a lot of these. I, I, I gotta say that was probably the most, your answers were the most sincere. I think I've ever had. I could tell that it weren't just like, you know, sometimes I, I catch myself just saying stuff that like maybe is rehearsed. Uh, so I appreciate you like actually giving and guys, anyone that's been on this call, um, carpet cleaner to freaking digital landlord and what you're, and, and I, I don't give you credit. I said it like that. You're a carpet clean business owner, but like, just to, to kind of like show the difference that all happened in, in six months or let's call it eight, nine months, but, but man, hats off to you, dude. Appreciate that, man. Last Thank thing. You. What's your goal? What's your goal? Where are you going to be at? 
Uh, where are you going to be at by the end of this year? And be careful, bro. Oh, man. To it, dude. We're almost to that year mark where I started doing interviews. I'm going to start bringing people back on and we're going to see where they're at. So be careful. Dude, I uh, was worried because I haven't said this out loud yet because I, I just changed it because we, we had kind of talked about this yesterday, like reevaluate. So my old goal was 15K by the end of the year, basically. Uh, I moved, so I moved that to 18K by the end of November. Love it, dude. Moved it up a month, added 3K. So I and got then uh, And you can enjoy December. It, that is that is 100% why. And there's no reason I can't do it sooner. So I love it. Okay. 18K. I'm writing it down, bro. 18K by December. You did it. It's it's scary to say. And so your old goal was 15K by the end of the year, right? Yep. I love it. Okay, bro, go prep for your call, go close it. And, and once you get it, post in the group. We want to hear about it, okay? Sounds good, man. Appreciate it. All right, next, when you're in town, let's go grab lunch. I know you're going to be in probably next week or two. Sounds good. Okay, talk to you, man. See you. Appreciate you, bro.